This is the thing with Lampard for me. For him not to be the casualty, there needs to be casualties elsewhere. Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Happy New Year to a lot of you. Probably not Chelsea fans, you're probably struggling a little bit and that's exactly what this video is going to be about. Now I've got a bit of a history with Chelsea. I've got a problem with Chelsea. That said, I think we can still dive into what is going on at Chelsea at the moment. The factors involved, the problems Frank Lambert has, the criticism that is fair to put at his door, but also what needs to happen to get Chelsea where they want to be, where the expectations are from an owner that is more cutthroat than any owner in world football. I think we could fairly say maybe Real Madrid, but apart from that, it's always been Chelsea. We're going to get into all of that before we do so. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. We've had an amazing month on the channel. Thank you so much to everyone who is new to the channel and who has subscribed. But if you haven't, get on with it. Please. Right, let's get into it. So the title of the video is My Problem with Chelsea. Now, I have several problems with Chelsea. Okay, first of all, for those of you who don't know, and people ask a lot of time, what is this? No, it's not an Ipswich Town mug. No, it's not a Chelsea mug. No, it's not a Wigan mug. It's a, it's a QPR mug. Now, QPR is my team. I'm a season to go and I miss going to the loft. I miss being in the upper loft, in the P block. You're a West London team, so you hate Chelsea. You are brought up to hate Chelsea. I didn't have a choice in the matter. My dad brainwashed me from day one, and I'm okay with that. So, uh, he's in there, Gary's in the chat, lads. Gary's in the chat. <laughs> I'd just like to say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I never felt more, more like singing, singing the blues when Rangers, Rangers win, win and Chelsea lose. Oh, Rangers. Come on, yeah, the lads. <sighs> Fucking hate Chelsea. Get in. Yes, I'm not the biggest fan of Chelsea Football Club. They are my rivals. I don't apologise for that. But looking at the situation here, it feels like there's quite a few things that people aren't really putting forward in terms of possibilities for the difficulties that Lampard and the club are going through now and what is creating this kind of tornado that creates the meme Lampard out. Lampard in, Lampard, pfft, Lampard out. So let's start off with that man himself. Lampard, does he deserve any criticism for what's going on right now? First of all, yes. Yes, he does. This is his team. A lot of money has been spent. Over £200 million have been spent, regardless if, it, if it's the year before or now. And the, the expectations are much, much higher. The problem I think Lampard's having at the moment is two things. Look at Chelsea here, right? There are a few areas, and I think we saw this at the start. This is the question that was put forward to, to everyone was, What's his best team? How's he going to figure out his best team? And that is still the problem that he has with him. Has he been able to play his best team as of yet? I don't think he has, to be honest. I think he knows what he wants to go with. The problem with that is that there are some players here who are throughout the season, we've not seen them possibly in the position that Lampard wants them to play in. And the big problem for Lampard, in my opinion, is this thing called over choice. Generally, I think he's figured out what his back four is, right? It's James, it's Zuma, it's Silva, it's Chilwell. Moving into midfield, he wants to play Kante there. He really, really wants to play Kante in that defensive midfield role. But of course, again, he has to rotate it a little bit. The problem that he has then is we move down into the attacking positions is that Kante is a world-class player, but you don't get the best out of Kante, in my opinion, if you don't play him as that DMC. And at the moment, he's only been able to do that four times, according to who scored. Then as we look down, it's... It's this front three. So the problem that Lampard has in the forward areas is he's got this plethora of players that he wants to sort of crowbar in. And this mix between youngsters who spent all our season playing for them and therefore feel that they should continue to play and a lot of big money signings that he needs to crowbar into this team. This leads to something called over choice. And I think this is something that Lampard's struggling with a little bit at the moment, okay? Also referred to as over choice, the phenomenon of choice overload occurs as a result of too many choices being available to consumers. Uh, it's been associated with unhappiness and going with the default option. So this is the first thing I think that Lampard needs to accept and understand is that he needs to decide on his starting system and his starting 11. 
and go with it with a for a run of games and i think this has been a problem for him because the likes of zyx been out he's not been able to settle on his forwards and then you've had forwards the players that actually want to just be steady and tick along like Giroud. Something that Rory said on the, the kickoff recently. He wanted him to, if he wasn't as good, then he wouldn't have more choice, which makes him just keep 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 rolling the dice. The other problem with that is chemistry. The, the chemistry of this squad, you've got a load of youngsters who played a lot of minutes last year, and they're the players that Lampard, deep down, actually quite trusts. And so he wants to keep them involved and get them involved, right? He understands the, the 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 value of doing that, right? But when you bring in all these big names as well, you've got to use them as well. But those big names, the likes of Havertz, the likes of uh, Werner, the likes of Pulisic, the form's not been good enough. So when the form's not good enough on the players that really deep down you'd love to put forward, and you've got these youngsters who you feel like you can trust at times and your job's going to be on the line, what it creates is um, a lack of hierarchy, I believe, in this football team. Look at Liverpool. The Liverpool... Front, uh, front 11, you know what it is. The front three, you know what it is. Look at all the great teams over the years. It's the same thing. You have your best eight, 11. You've probably got your best 11, haven't you? Look at, think of any team right now. Arsenal Invincibles. Man United in 2008. Leicester City when they won it. Great Chelsea teams in the past. The 11 is the 11. You know who those players are. And then there are often a few youngsters who come in and add that little bit of energy. At the moment, you've kind of got it backwards. You have Thiago Silva there as this kind of leading light, I think, as a bit of a leader. But then as you move forward up the pitch, the players that are leaders are the players that you're actually probably trying to slowly move out of the team. The likes of Kovacic, the likes of Jorginho, the likes of Giroud. These are players that really he doesn't want to be playing. If he's honest, he doesn't want to play these players. It's great to have a squad, but you have to have people that are understanding of their roles within that squad, understanding of the you know that first 11. And then also for Lampard as a coach, he needs to understand who his first 11 is. And then from there, he can then compare properly the difference between his first 11 and the players uh, beneath. In terms of team chemistry, Lampard's got some massive, massive problems here. So if you take a look at the idea of chemistry within sport, team chemistry is a sum of relationships between every player and the coach. When coaches refer to strong or positive team chemistry, they are highlighting the team's conscious effort to reach a common goal instead of selfish pursuits. Now, what that is saying is, and what that leads to in terms of a problem for Lampard straight off the bat is that who out of this squad knows that they are going to be within this squad for the next year, 18 months, two years, three years, four years? You get my point, right? That is something that Lampard has to cultivate. Coaches don't improve team chemistry by choosing athletes who get along. Instead, they initiate scenarios and provide environments that enable positive relationships to growth or at least to build respect. Teaching their athletes to work with others beyond their own personal feelings is a powerful skill that will benefit in their future athletic, professional and personal careers. Cultivating trust, open communication, and equality between team members creates a stronger team bond and leads to success. Now, I think Lampard is trying to do that, but I almost think like he's gone too far. He hasn't created his base his understanding of who his guys are because he's trying to be equal to all of them. He's also been quite clear and some people have given him some some stick for the fact that he's he's called out some of his players. Now, yep, if you go by the Ferguson Bible, you shouldn't be doing that. But something that Gerard has done, and I think Gerard and Lampard, when I look at those two as men, I think they're quite similar in the fact that these are the standards and you need to you need to come up here. So in terms of creating respect and trust and chemistry, Lampard needs some time. He needs some time to understand who his best players are, who his best team is, and he needs to do it in a space where he is he's safe to do it, where he's the guy who's not going to be going anywhere. This is the problem that you will always have at Chelsea. Even Frank Lampard will have at Chelsea is that the foundations of, say, a Jurgen Klopp where you go, well, no, he's our manager and he's going to be our manager for the next two, three, four years, you know, at the start of that journey. For Lampard, this is like the greatest player Chelsea have ever had. Even he is on unstable footing. But last year, they did a lot better. The reason they did a lot better was because 
of all of those elements were actually coming together. You, you had to invest in the young players. Lampard knew that he had the whole season, that he wasn't going anywhere. And also the players knew they were going to be there for the whole season. And so you saw players trust in each other, create a bit of chemistry. And those youngsters were all playing together. So that chemistry was able to come through as well. The problem that you've got this year is that you've taken that group and now you've chucked in all these big names that expect to be playing. And the problem with that is that crashes into all of that chemistry. For Lampard, you've got a mix of players that have kind of, I've kind of already done it. I'm, I'm, I'm here already, right? And a load of players who are like, hang on, I've been here for a while now. And a lot of players are going, hang on, you just spent a load of money on me. Why am I not playing? That makes it very, very difficult for Frank Lampard to create the chemistry that he wants. The second problem that they have, well, is it third? I've lost count now. Social loafing. I know it's a bit of a psycho psychology lesson, but I think this is part of it as well. Social loafing in sport refers to the behavior of team members in a certain sporting activity to reduce the efforts of their contribution to the team. It's thought to be caused by motivational loss and is common when several members of a team are trying to achieve the same goal through performing the same tasks. Social loafing can have a disastrous consequence to sporting outcomes. Now, this is something that I was talking about on the kickoff very briefly um, the other week. Because I was saying Aston Villa. Look at that Aston Villa team. Great balance. But you've also got a squad there that understands who the best players are, where they're playing, and what their role is to the team. Jack Grealish needs to go and create. El Ghazi needs to go and score some goals. Watkins, he's your striker. McGinn, he's your legs. Douglas Luiz, he's the guy who sits and breaks things up. Everyone knows their role. So everyone is doing all that they can. It gives you that 100%. With Chelsea, once again... With the amount of depth that they have in the squad, no one knows who's the guy and no one has put their hand up to say, I am the guy. And again, if you look at the amount of players that have played on the right-hand side, the amount of players that have played through the middle, so many options, no one knows who the guy is. Now, it is a very congested season, so that's going to be a problem within this, right? But I come back to the fact that social loafing goes away once you know who that starting eleven is because there's a new kind of pressure on those players. I think Lampard needs to stick with a front three and, and understand what he wants to put forward going, this is my blueprint, these are my players, and this is my starting 11. And you're a leader, you're a leader, and you're a leader. And that will possibly put an end to this social loafing. But to be honest, the social loafing could continue between now and the summer because it's, it's a flabby squad. In 2020, there were two dismissals. Pearson and Slavin Bilic. Neither actually needed to happen, really. And you've seen that with Sam Allardyce and West Brom and their struggles right now because it's not actually got any better there. And especially with COVID, I think Chelsea are probably exempt from that for, for two reasons. One, the money they have as just a huge football club in the Premier League. The second reason is because this is Chelsea Football Club. You know what they do. They're ruthless and they do it every single year, it feels like. I was looking back at the managers that they've had. How many of these managers between January and May have felt like dead men walking? You've got Ranieri, kind of knew he was going. Antonio Conte, you kind of knew he was going. Sari, you kind of knew he was going. It's crazy, right? Even the likes of Angelotti. They were plotting behind his back. So even when you thought someone was safe, they weren't safe. This has gone on time and time and time again for Chelsea Football Club. So I wouldn't put it beyond them cultivating the next manager. You know, will it be Tuchel? I think that's the kind of guy that will become the option for every club. Allegri and that Italian link to Chelsea has always been a strong one. So my problem with Chelsea here is, is that you've got a club that knows one way. And for one season, last season, that's the only blip in going down this righteous road of he's a club legend, we know what he's about. Now they've got the option to go, oh, Tuchel's over there or Allegri's over there. And for Chelsea fans and therefore the media portrayal of all of this, you've got a problem because... There's, there's like there's old smoke. <laughs> Who knows if there's fire or not? And the Athletic are reporting that, that 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 is the case, right? But there's old smoke just sort of wafting into view. And so it's almost like we've kind of been trained to go, well, right, Chelsea aren't winning the league this year. But the expectations of Chelsea are have bounced down and are now bouncing back. And the only way that they will get to where they want to be, I think we all know, is with a team with chemistry and a team with leaders. And 
you have to find that either in the players or the manager needs to instill that into the players. In Lampard, you have a man who has been a leader, has been a captain, has been a hero for that club. Like I said before, is, is a smart guy who knows football and alongside Jody Morris knows these youngsters as well as these high profile players that are going to come into a squad that similar to Lampard in his playing days, he will understand what it's like and how you need to manoeuvre the other parts of it because he used to be one of those other parts. For him to survive, there has to be casualties. I said this at the start of the season. There are too many players who want to be the main man at Chelsea and he needs to decide who his front three are first and foremost, or who's starting 11 is. For me, I actually think there's a place for Werner to play in a very fluid front three with Pulisic on the left, him through the middle, Zayek on the right. But it's a fluid one because, look, everyone's talking about Werner and saying, oh, right, he can't play through the middle, he can't play through the left side. The truth is he can play both. He can, he can actually play as a number 10 as well. So Werner is a problem, but he's a problem because you're not giving him the keys to the, this Chelsea side. That's what he needs to do, Lampard. He needs to create some casualties. He needs to understand that there will be some growing pains and he needs to move forward with his guys. His team back in the day, Lampard, Drogba, himself, Czech, you knew who the leaders of that team were. At the moment, you don't know who they are at Chelsea. And if Havertz is not playing, is that because you just haven't found a way for him to fit in yet or you've just not given him the keys? This is the thing with Lampard for me. For him not to be the casualty, there needs to be casualties elsewhere. I just think Lampard is caught between trusting these youngsters, trusting the players that did well for him last year and moving forward with the players that are supposedly going to be the future of his managerial career and Chelsea Football Club. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Lampard. Are you Lampard in or are you Lampard? Sorry, I was just... Sorry, I was trying not to be sick there. Are you Lampard in or Lampard out? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with some of the elements that I'm talking about, the psychology within this and what Lampard needs to do to kind of bring this squad back together and start to harness some chemistry? Because I think that's got to be part of it. That's what I said. I feel like they're very undercooked at the moment. But for them to bake... He needs to understand what his starting 11 is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this, often I do this, I just have an idea in my head and then we explore it. And I love to read your comments down below. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys soon.